We had left the beautiful paradise that was the Sears Islands and had hopped over to a marina in Bayona to clean the boat, pick up a parcel, empty our rubbish, buy some bits. A good dinghy pump finally. Our last one got with the dinghy um, and it was second hand the dinghy and everything like that and the pump was probably the not so good aspect of the buy. So some of this should do it. See the city. and take a long anticipated shower. Just like this, it is actually better than the Luanco one. Yeah. The actual shower is our cleaner. I was really looking forward to the shower because yes, it wasn't the prettiest thing. But A, there was hot water and B, uh, the pressure was good. And then, hold on, I'm gonna have to clean this. And then this happened. Can we just appreciate? That is the colour the water came out. And now I just wish I hadn't taken that shower. We're Becca and Zach, a couple who recently, after years of dreaming, bought ourselves a beautiful 40 foot Colvick Victor sailboat. Life is short and the world is wide and there are so many lessons to be learned. Laughs shared, people met, adventures had, and nautical miles to be sailed. And this is our way of sharing it all with you. Welcome to the Tailey. Bloody doing it. <laughs> Today, we are heading to a new country. We're heading to Portugal and we're pretty much ready. We're just waiting for it to get a bit lighter because coming out of marinas, there's a lot of pots and going down the coast, there's a lot of pots and we do not want to hit one. So we're just waiting for the sun, well, the sun will come up for a little while, but a bit lighter than it is right now. And then we're gonna set off. definitely a big city we've heard planes cars dogs boats we've heard it all it's quite nice actually a bit of a bit of life in the city quite a lot of life in the city the tide is ripping we are really glad our, yeah we're really glad our anchor's holding 2.5 knots of tide anyway we have an exciting package and it actually arrived in Bayona and I'll give you a bit of a backstory first we've been having some issues with our engine batteries Actually, it's not the engine batteries, they've done nothing wrong. But when we turn the key for our ignition, the engine batteries aren't starting the engine and they sound very flat. So I've been up and down to the engine room constantly the last few weeks, uh, multimeter testing them, and every time they've said they're full. So then I thought it was a dodgy connection on the batteries, so I cleaned the connections up and tightened them all, and they're fine. And so I traced it back, and the next thing that it could have been was this switch we've got 
before we sorted all our electronics out, we had this switch which just did domestic. It had domestic battery one, domestic battery two. There's no need for us to do that. We've got a whole bank and it's in that cupboard there. And then we had that little switch there and that was the same but for engine batteries. So we had engine battery one, engine battery two, both. There's no need to do that because like last time, this is all a bank. Our engine batteries are a bank. So that's now redundant. And coming around to this. Oh wait, I'm gonna have to shut this. We are in the flight path. So coming down to this, we have our domestic batteries here, our engine batteries here, and both here and both off here. This usually is lit up, but we'll get to that in a sec. So anyway, we can switch between our domestic batteries, charging and operating off and off, and our engine. So if we turn this to engine and start the engine now, for example, our engine batteries would be powering the engine and the alternator would be charging the engine batteries. If we turn it here, our domestic batteries are the ones being used to start the engine and also the solar is charging the domestic. If we have it in both, the whole the whole bank together, the six batteries will start the engine. We don't really want that because the engine batteries require high cranking batteries and the domestic ones are AGMs and not high cranking. But it, because we've got so many amp hours here, it will start the engine if we have to. That's why we've got this switch. Usually we have absolutely no way of telling how full our engine batteries are except this and it usually has an LED light up to about here which is 13.8 and that indicates that the engine batteries are full. Our domestic is all on an app, it's the Victron app that we've installed when we got the batteries. That works fab but it can only do those batteries. Essentially when I figured out what was going on I took this switch off I swapped the domestic and the engine around and then I tried to start the engine and it worked. That indicated to me that the the connection between the switch and the old engine position, which was here, was dodgy. So that wasn't creating a good enough connection. So I've swapped them over uh, because in the end it doesn't matter if we can't use our lights, but it does matter if we can't start our engine on the engine batteries. However, in the process of doing that, I did the thing that I said I would never do and I short-circuited the skinny wires for here and they burnt out so we now no longer have a light here so we don't know once again how full our engine batteries are and this is where the package comes in we were looking at a kind of smart monitoring system for the boat and we've been looking at it for a, quite a while we haven't quite found one that we have liked and actually Ned from my Ver crew reached out to us and he said look guys do you want to test out the bundle um, try it out on Tailey if you like it you like it if you don't you don't you know try it out and just give it a go. So we've got the bundle here and we are so excited to finally install it. Moment of truth. Bang! What's that? I didn't jump. <laughs> you did. No, I didn't. And look at the camera in a minute. <laughs> I've had my fair share of electric shocks. Is it working? Yeah, look, there you go. Battery one voltage is at 12.87. Oh, yeah. We installed all the sensors. So it's, so it's um, not stuck at the moment, yeah? We want it as close this way as we can. Yeah. Where do the washboards go? Oh, that's fine. Ooh. <laughs> Just. Scanned them into the app and made some bilge pump wiring adjustments. So we have a bilge pump. It's an automatic one, so when the water gets a certain height, it goes off. But and when we take a shower, it doesn't go over the limit of how high it needs to be, so it doesn't go off. So we want to wire in a manual switch for it, and so that's what I'm doing now, and the best one we could do on our control panel was to lose the TV one, because we don't have a TV, so I'm just, I just cut the TV, and I'm gonna feed it back through, and we've got to try and figure out now how to make it reach to the bilge pump, which is always a fun game. <laughs> I think I've just finished it. It's a bodge job, because I had to connect a brown and a blue together, but it's fine. Zach? Yeah. Shall we try it? Yeah, go on. Hope it works. <gasps> Yay! You're amazing. <gasps> oh my gosh. You legend. I just wired that all up. That's nice. Okay, oh, that's we, so much better. we have a manual, or well, automatic, but manual override. Automatic with a manual override. That's really cool. On the TV setting on there. So yeah, we'll just we'll change, change that. The Yay, happy? So happy.
That makes my life so much easier, you don't even know. <laughs> Zach has to go in there after we shower and like hold the bilge pump down well, to trigger this. I don't the... have to, I just don't like there being warm water in the engine room, steam and everything a bit like damp in there. And we don't like... want water in our bilges anyway. No, I quite like emptying them out fully. Air high five. <laughs> and then it was time to test it all out. So the door's closed. You're gonna hear me push it open. Okay, and now it's open. Open! <laughs> That's really cool. If you don't disarm it first or something like that, it'd be cool if they put in something that like sounds an alarm on your yeah, boat. Yeah, that would be really cool. And it all worked. We just needed to extend the wiring for the bow thruster, but it was nice to have alerts on all the important systems on Tailey. With the fog coming in thick, we decided to crack on with another job on the list, moving the Fluxgate compass for our autopilot. At the moment, we've got Becker's wardrobe on the other side of that as our inverter, and we probably should have thought about it, but it was kind of the only place we could have put the inverter or the electronics anyway, so we had to put that there. But we should have thought about it affecting the flux gate because you can't have anything magnetic or metal near it, and it's got a bit of plywood probably about a centimeter thick separating the two. So whenever we turn on any big appliances like the kettle or anything like that, the whole autopilot just goes all over the place and just freaks out basically. So whilst I'm also taking that out and taking the stuff out of Becca's wardrobe, there's this old felt lining, which has got this like horrible sticky stuff on the back. So I'm gonna take that all out, strip it all back, put some adhesive remover on it to get rid of all the horrible foam stuff on there, wear a respirator because I'm fairly sure the stuff is quite toxic. Then paint it all white so it looks nice and new and actually a nice piece of Becca's put her clothes. So I'm gonna change that now. That right there is the flux gate. There's normally some boards here kind of covering all those wires up, but I've taken those out and then the bilge is down there covered in the foamy stuff, which is all of that stuff there. But we're gonna strip all this off, which won't be that hard, but it's getting all this stuff off underneath is the difficult bit. We nearly just got crashed into by that. Oh! Bloody hell. That is so close. What? That was They must have been crapping themselves. Guys, yeah, he almost ran into that boat. Yeah, really bad. And then his back end nearly hit us. He's out of the channel as well. Because we're not in the channel. Yeah, he can't even see the channel because he can't see the markers. That's so close to us. Oh my gosh, because what happened was he went past, really close to us as it was, and then we saw that boat ahead and was, we were like, oh my gosh, he's going to hit them. So instantly he started reversing and his back end came right near us and oh, I don't know how it didn't hit. I don't think he was reversing, I think he just had to take it so tightly that his bum Yeah true, was... he probably had to just turn really quickly. He literally got inches from our bow, Zach. I bet he's not having a fun day. So anything we do when we do electrics is we take a photo of how it was before. So I can't mess up too badly, hopefully. So now it's the final test, yeah? Yeah. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna put the kettle on, which should do absolutely nothing because the inverter is- Miles away. Yeah, it's like two, three meters away now. Yeah. Anything? Wait a sec, give it a sec. No, it's not changing. No, I can hear the inverter going as well in the background. It's not changing. Lovely. Give me a high five. We just need to make sure we put no metal objects yeah, no. in this vicinity now. After that near miss and ticking off all our boat jobs, it was time to head into the city and do a 10 kilometer walk to get swept into the Portuguese culture.
We're at the beautiful tiled wall, which was made using traditional Portuguese tiling methods. And interestingly, an ancient law prevented two churches sharing the same wall. So separating the Camelitas and Karma churches is called narrowest house. much going on here it's kind of crazy there's so many like little shops and restaurants we've walked past a load of restaurants where there's literally just one table outside it's amazing and then there's just like two people on it i think it may be up there with our favorite city it's amazing here hello So I've stripped all the fabric now and now I'm just going to get all this horrible foam stuff off. A lot of it will just kind of flake off like that. So I'm just going to get the hoover and just pass over everything, just keep the dust down a little bit in here because we obviously sleep in here. Now to use my improvised scraper, which is probably not the safest thing in the world, but it did really well last time because we currently don't have a proper scraper. So I'm just going to use this and... Okay, now that I've got rid of the worst of it, I'm going to start getting the um, adhesive stripper on. I've left it for an hour now, but as you can see it's starting to peel up here, so I've just started scraping it all back. Now I just need to go in there and give it a good old paint. Ooh. It's getting there. Yeah, it looks really good. I did a few more layers because it's obviously quite thin at the moment, but um, I need to touch up a few bits, but it will look way better. It looks it's so much nicer done. than that horrible foam. Yeah, it's so much brighter in there already as well. No, it looks massive. Thank you. So much better. Whilst it was still foggy and the paint was out, I decided to crack on and paint the saloon, something we had wanted to do since March, but wasn't ever a big enough priority to do. What do I get, Becca? I don't know. <gasps> Pasta del Nartas. Yum. What did you get in here? I thought you were just going for Pasta del Nartas. <gasps> oh my gosh, that looks incredible. There's a, is that an apple one? Yeah, I don't know. I just pointed at them. He just Whoa, gave them to me, so. they're incredible um, looking. I have no idea if they're going to be good, but I'm sure they will be delicious. They look so nice. <gasps> Thanks. Look at these coasters. Cheers. Mmm. That's so fine. good. <gasps> this is so weird. The thing we really weren't expecting about this river was just how many fish there'd be. We would look out and see their mouths on the surface as they circled our boat day and night. It was incredible. He's massive. Look at my finger compared to him. For the next few days, we had fog, fog, and more fog. Without a generator, our battery bank got so low that we were worried that we had permanently damaged our AGMs, and alongside the battery level, the morale and Taley had also dropped. The wind shifted, so we re-anchored on the other side of the river, and an hour later, the outboard cut out en route to the dock. It stopped again. Let's throw it. 
We were both itching to hoist the sails and continue the adventure. But when you're living on water and following the weather, it dictates your travel plans entirely. So we were going to have to be patient and wait for it to pass. 